What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, another electronics video. I'm gonna bring you guys behind the steering wheel. We're gonna look at sonar, fish ID. I'm gonna show you guys what fish look like. So let's jump behind the steering wheel and let's go find some fish. One of the questions that we get asked more often than, than most is uh, questions about electronics and, and most out of that category is what do fish look like? How do you know what you're looking at? So uh, we've done a lot of in-depth sonar electronics videos in the past. We'll link those down below. But today I just wanted to do something simple. We'll get behind this shade line so you guys don't get any reflection off of the, the, the hummingbird unit. And I'm just gonna idle and I'm gonna put the 2D sonar, sonar on. Uh, I can go back and forth with down imaging, side imaging, uh, but mainly 2D so you guys can see what I interpret as fish and uh, their positioning, that sort of stuff. But uh, let's jump behind the console idle around and let's go find some fish and uh, really dive into what they look like on 2D sonar. All right, so now we are behind the console. This is actually a Solix, Hummingbird Solix uh, 15. So I, I normally have it set on the side to, uh, to run side imaging, 2D sonar and down imaging. But for today's purposes, we're strictly doing 2D sonar because that is what all fish finders show you. They all have 2D sonar. So it doesn't matter if you're a beginner fisherman uh, with something on your kayak or uh, an advanced fisherman with something on your, on your big bass boat, 2D sonar takes some time to learn how to read it. And uh, hopefully we will get over some schools of fish and I can show you how to interpret it. So 2D sonar, uh, hopefully you guys have seen some of our more in-depth videos on um, sonar and these electronics because because uh, fish finders, uh, boat electronics have come such a long way in the, in the last few years. Uh, the technology is just out of this world good these days. So right here, what we have, let me zoom back out. So this is the bottom right here. This is the bottom. Right now we're in like 25 foot. These are fish that are suspended out off of that ledge. I don't think those are bass, but uh, this has given you guys the opportunity to see. So that's a that's a, a group of white bass. Bunch of fish all piled up, congregated together. Uh, and here is a single arch down there. Now that one is a bass. So that fish is down in like 25 foot, 24 foot or so. But that is a bass right there. Let's go ahead and switch over just to show you the difference from 2D sonar and down imaging. So here's that school of fish I was talking about. You can really see how the, uh, the down imaging separates that school of fish. But for 2D sonar purposes, oh, here we go. Another school down here. So because I have the, the down imaging, I can, I can um, flip between the two screens and see that those are actually small groups of fish down on the bottom. If you didn't have that capability, cast down to it, and you might find out that it's a, a tree or a bush that comes up about six or seven feet or so. But uh, lots, of, lots of fish activity here suspended. So how this works, I have a transducer mounted to the back of the boat underwater and it shoots down a signal. And that signal goes down to the bottom and bounces back up. And uh, it, it's shot out in a, in a cone, if you will. And uh, so right now it's kind of like a, a, a flashlight shooting down and, and reflecting. And that transducer interprets that reflection from that ping, from that, that frequency, that source, and uh, gives you the readout. So here we got one, two, three fish right there got some more stuff on the bottom right here. Now that is where I'm hoping we can find some fish on the bottom because it's really hard to tell sometimes uh, if it's if it's a rock you're looking at or a stump or an actual fish laying on bottom. But uh, see this arch right here? 
So what that is, that is the, the frequency, that is the, the sonar ping from the transducer down and it goes over the back of the fish. So arches like this is a perfect readout of a fish. Sometimes you will go over them sideways. Sometimes you'll just get half the fish or just kind of a, a, not, a not complete readout. But these are all fish right here. So to an untrained eye, you would think that there's just a lot of junk on the bottom. But in all reality, these are all fish right here. And just to confirm, you'll see these fish's air bladders on the down imaging and you'll see the schools up here on side imaging again all these are fish i don't think these are bass up here oh they're they're bass they're whites and yellow bass but largemouth bass or spotted or smallmouth bass are these guys down here again i just wanted to kind of throw the camera up behind the console so you guys can do some idling around with me and just see uh see what these units look like and what to me fish look like so here we go up here suspended so this is the surface zero feet all the way down to 22 and a half feet right here 12 to 15 feet or so you have four or five fish suspended together nice big arch down here there we go So this is more fish. Now we're in a ton of fish right now and um, the lake that I'm on, most likely these are either big schools of whites or yellow bass. Uh, sometimes they're crappie or bluegill, but the majority of them are whites and yellows. The cool thing about this fishery is uh, you can catch big largemouth mixed in because they eat those little guys. So again, this is your surface, this is the depth. We kind of jumped up here on the this hump. Let me get back into the creek channel. Uh, a lot of times that's where these fish are gonna hang out. They're gonna hang out right on the break of the creek channel. Let me whip around real quick. Now there's lots of things you can do to uh, to play around with these units, they really get them dialed in. You can you can change the frequency. Uh, you can change the frequencies. You can change the sensitivity. You can change all this stuff. But a lot of times, if you just plug them in, uh, go with the standard settings, that will get you started. That will give you a good enough picture, and then you can really dial it in uh, when you're out on the water. But just going with your, your standard settings, sensitivity at 10, contrast at 10, right in the middle, uh, that's a good starting point uh, to get these graphs dialed in. You can see now, kind of out of the fish. So I'm gonna get out here to the ledge. So again, this is the bottom. Now a lot of you guys already know this stuff, but uh, we get this question asked so often, how to interpret this, uh, Look at these fish right here. So these are bass. These are largemouth or spots or, or smallies. I think they're largemouth. See how they're right on the right on the ledge. Right on the ledge. On the break. Hanging to bottom. You know, these fish out here are almost impossible to catch. But these bass right here, those are money. These guys right here are one, two, three, maybe four. That could be two but these all right here, see how there's red and yellow inside the, uh, the arch? That means those fish are bigger. See how these don't have the yellow or the red in there? You're getting more of a readout right here on bottom and uh, those right here are the fish I'd be fishing for. Again, here's bottom, we come to the creek channel, breaks off, they're all fish right here. So again, you can play around with settings. You can really, really, uh, you can really mess things things up. If you ever, if you do, uh, definitely just go into your settings and reset to uh, reset to factory, and that will that will erase all of the mess ups or the things that you might have changed that you don't know how to back out of. When I first started doing this, playing around with all these different settings and stuff, you know, you go down that rabbit trail, and sometimes you get lost. You just have to completely start over so 
hit that factory reset um, or don't hit factory reset because if you have waypoints that will delete a lot of your stuff but you can go back and reset your settings for your sonar to uh, factory so again let's go let's try and go with this other side of the ledge over here and see if we can find some fish up on the top so we can get some real distinct arches on the bottom So we've already seen school of fish. We've seen a handful of fish on bottom, glued to the bottom on the break. A couple fish right there. Nice one. So those fish that are only like two feet off the bottom, those are definitely catchable. You know, you throw a drop shot or a lipless crank or a jig, Texas rig worm, something like that. Those fish will follow that bait down to the bottom if they're wanting to eat and uh, Big dude right there. Again, these videos are always so tricky to do to not get the reflection and, and the sun in your face and everything. Again, now we're getting back into that school of suspended fish. So I know a lot of this to the untrained eye just looks like a lot of uh, just junk in the water or you know maybe the transducer's not reading out correctly. But now that you know kind of how that sonar works, how the, how the transducer works, you beginners out there, when you see those arches, those are fish. If they're close to bottom, they're usably, usually catchable. So I just came out of the creek channel up to the high spot and now I'm back into the creek channel. So again, that transducer is shooting that signal down Anything that gets in the way of it, it gets since it comes back quicker than if it went all the way down the bottom, it's getting a it's getting that readout. Getting that readout and uh, relaying that information onto the screen. Now all of these work. It doesn't matter if it's uh, you know an, an entry level unit or the nicest unit on the market, a lot of the internals are the same as far as 2d sonar uh, definitely you get what you pay for pay for with uh, nicer transducers transducers that combine frequencies that sort of stuff but again this is just an entry-level video that uh, I wanted to do for everyone we'll do maybe that video later on big school right there Hopefully that helps you guys out. I know it's uh, these videos are hard to shoot, especially with the boat traffic, the boat moving around, screen reflection, but I really wanted to do a, just an entry level video for you guys that are just getting into electronics, uh, getting into fish finders for your uh, your kayak, your little aluminum or your, or your bass boat, but um, hopefully that shed a little bit of light on, on how the transducer works and what fish look like. You know, we didn't really get the, the flat bottom with just a single arch on bottom uh, very well, but we got a lot of schools of bait, a lot of schools of fish suspended. But uh, if you guys can understand that, understand how the, how the transducer works, you know, sending that signal down to the bottom and getting the, the return and putting it up here on the screen for you. If you understand how that works, it'll help you if you're just idling around, idling around looking for breaks, looking for depth changes, looking for arches on those depth changes, but understanding what fish look like in, in five feet of water and in 50 feet of water, uh, this will really help you guys uh, not waste your time. When you see arches like that, especially when they're glued to bottom, 
stop and fish for them because nine times out of ten those fish will eat. Hopefully that video shed a little bit of light on uh, 2D sonar and what fish look like on electronics for you guys. If you learned something from this video, give us a like. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, strictly teaching to help you guys catch more fish. Another school right there. As always guys, like I said, we appreciate you. Have a good one.